welcome to my sewing room. We are so excited about the show we have for you today. The theme, the major theme, is non-traditional heirloom sewing. And I'll give you a little hint, we're going to use the serger. We have as my guest today, Pam Mashey. Pam is Director of Education for Baby Lock USA. This little boy suit is so adorable. It has the little tuck stitched down with a serger and a wonderful little machine embroidery and a little tiny baby boy size and of course machine embroidery in the center front. You just are not going to believe this beautiful little smock dress. Are you ready? Serger smocking. Isn't this gorgeous? With the pink and the variegated thread with pink and ecru, a wonderful little silk dress, and on the bottom of the skirt, it is also hemmed with a serger, which is truly beautiful. This dress was one of the patterns in So Beautiful magazine not too many years ago, and the traditional, the, the embellishments are wonderful. The collar has beautiful machine embroidery, tiny, tiny little bows, and tiny, tiny little stems. Those tiny little bows which are wonderful for a child or for a doll are also down the front and these double needle pin tucks aren't really double needle pin tucks at all but they're beautiful serger embellishment wonderful serger embellishments also down the skirt and this beautiful little baby day gown is so pretty with the little serger pin tucks and serger trim down the front and this beautiful machine embroidery piece that goes right down the middle. And once again, on the bottom of the day gown, it's just a beautiful little rolled serger hem. Very easy to do. Now won't you come along with me over to my technique boards. You are going to love this wonderfully easy machine fagoting. Okay, here we go. Now take the fabric, mark the line where you're going to have the fagoting in between, and the next step, of course, is to cut it apart. Using your serger, go ahead and overcast or roll hem both of those edges. Now here comes the fun part. Using this sticky uh, stabilizer, go in behind. That's my sticky stabilizer. It's really sticky. And you can put it down and everything is completely, perfectly, evenly spaced. Now I'm going to put down a water-soluble stabilizer on top of this because I don't want it to stick to my sticky when I run the foot down there. After you go ahead and do your machine fagoting, joining these two rows, then you cut away or tear away your water-soluble stabilizer and you have a beautiful machine fagoting. Here to share this technique with you is my friend Pam Mashey. Pam is Director of Education for Baby Lock USA. Pam, welcome to the show. Thanks, Martha. It's great to be here. So many of us are very busy these days and we still want to be able to do heirloom sewing. There's a couple of products that are going to be essential when you do this technique. One is going to be the wash away sticky stabilizer. The other is the water soluble stabilizer. And as you can see, the sticky stabilizer is just peeled off, one side is peeled off, and it's very sticky to place your fabric on. We've rolled edge, done a rolled hem on both sides of our piece of fabric in order to create the ridge in which to sew because we're going to be working with a pin tuck foot on our sewing machine. Once we have the spacing determined on our machine, either a five or a seven millimeter stitch, we want to make sure that that distance is set perfectly. And this is where our water soluble sticky stabilizer comes in. We're going to want to make sure that that distance is equal in spacing. So we place that sticky stabilizer, place it on the sticky stabilizer. We then have the water soluble stabilizer placed on top so that it does again not stick to our presser foot. Now let me show you going to the machine how we're going to do that. We've selected our fagoting stitch on the machine and a seven millimeter wide stitch. With having our pin tuck foot on the machine we can simply place those rolled hem stitches inside each of those pin tuck those grooves, grooves on the foot. How exciting. And then all we're going to need to do is stitch. You can probably do it hands free. Absolutely. And one nice thing too that you can do is a lot of the machines now you can with the embroidery function, not so with a foot control. So you could do presser foot free sewing. Yeah. And just okay. using your start okay. stop button. 
open. That is absolutely okay. fascinating. And Completely we just... beautiful. And you know what? This darling bonnet that you have your embroidery and your serger tux, this is, I really wanted to show our audience mm -hmm. this. This is one of the most beautiful. It really does look like hand faggoting. Doesn't it? And for those mm -hmm. people that don't know how or don't have time, or this is absolutely wonderful. And Pam, I found too that a lot of people that love handwork with arthritis are sometimes not able to do it anymore. So it's nice that we have alternatives. Exactly. And let me share one thing with you too, Martha. This is the first faggoting stitch that I've ever done. Well, it's and perfect. I, I'm not really, I didn't exactly know how to do faggoting. It's perfect so this and it's beautiful. An so anybody way. else can have perfect, beautiful Absolutely. faggoting too. Absolutely. Pam, thank you so much. You're welcome. And now we have a technique for you when you're sewing for your baby. And this is one of the most beautiful dresses I've ever seen. I understand you have some serger things on here. Would you tell us a little bit about it? We sure do, Martha. On here we have the rolled hem, which has been used to insert the lace. And we also have right next to it, and some tucks following, a chain stitch that has been used. We like to use a 30 weight thread when we use the chain stitch as a decorative stitch because then it gives it just a little bit more um, body to the stitch and it's a little bit uh, heavier to look at the that look. Is so pretty. And then this wonderful, uh, the pin tucks that really aren't pin tucks right. on the sleeves. Tell us right. about those, Pam. These again are just simply lines of stitching that have been done with the chain stitch and again using the 30 weight thread in the chain looper on your serger really makes a nice effect. This was the most interesting thing you have done. Now tell us, this is an antique dress, is that correct? This is an antique dress and it is approximately 100 years old. But what mm -hmm. I really want our viewers to see is what you did making the new dress, let me get this straightened out a little bit over here, right. using serger tucks. Now tell us right. about these beautiful tucks. These little tucks have actually been done with the cover stitch, the narrow cover stitch on our serger, and then pressed all in one direction. Sewing those different little tucks using the cover stitch, again, gives a little interest, a little added interest, and we did the same thing on the sleeves that for that. absolutely beautiful. And then this is another version. Tell us about these little stitches right in there. Again, using the chain stitch and cover stitch, you can create some very interesting effects, not taking up any fabric. Just decorative. Just decorative. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And what about this serger smocking? Now, this serger smocking is a new technique that we've actually been working with. And by being able to sew over either pre-pleated fabric using your, your pleater, or you can actually just do rows of gathering stitches. What did did you use just gathering stitches? We just there? used gathering stitches. So anybody on here. with a sewing machine can do that. Absolutely. And also try on your serger using the differential feed and your cover stitch. That's going to give you a nice gathering technique also. Okay. okay. Here we have shadow tucks that have been done. Again, sewing over a a piece of yarn we're going to get a very interesting shadow tuck that's done with our serger. Completely untraditional in well, our that's, heirloom that's exciting, sewing. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have our machine set for uh, the cover stitch, a narrow cover stitch, and we've simply drawn all of our lines on the fabric first to get an accurate mark. We're going to fold on that line and then just simply sew the lines of stitching. Once they're complete, you simply press all in the same direction. This is and like those wonderful complete. tucks on that christening, the antique christening dress that you reproduced. Right, right. Perfectly beautiful. Now that that is complete, there you go. And you can see can that up. then all of those tucks would be laying in the same direction and you'd have nice heirloom tucks. It is so beautiful. And the fact that you copied that gorgeous antique dress into something fabulous and I might add a whole lot quicker. Exactly. <laughs> much, much quicker. Pam, thank you so much for You're bringing welcome. these beautiful garments and these wonderful techniques on the serger to our viewers. And next I have a home decorating project for you. This pillow is truly fabulous and fascinating.
There are several real aspects of this pillow that I think you're going to enjoy seeing how to do. First of all, the stripe. This start out of striped fabric. The stripes run up and down and then diagonally. And there's piping around the edge of the pillow, just like there's piping down the middle of the pillow. And these beautiful flanges that fit the pillow just right have a miter at each corner, making this one of those pillows that probably would be in the $200 category in a designer gift shop. Now let me share with you the secrets on how to do several of the points of this pillow. First of all, to make the flange, I've got to get a 90 degree angle. Now how do we do this? When I open it up, take the striped fabric, fold it once. Take the striped fabric, fold it once again, and finger press, and that is going to give me the right angle. Now then I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to straight stitch down that angle. Just give me just a second, we'll just straight stitch, and I'll open it up and show you that beautiful 90 degree angle, which will go around right around the corner of our flange pillow. Okay. Open it up. See that beautiful angle right there? Now that is how we got that perfectly matching angle. Now let's construct this pillow. First of all, I have some piping, which is going to go all the way around the outside of the pillow. So I will come in, put it on the very edge, butt it, clip it to move it around at the angle, and baste the piping on, matching the edges of the piping with the edges of the pillow. Now this flange that we made a few minutes ago, you see here's our flange and it's got to fit perfectly around it. Well, I'm going to treat it just like a ruffle to attach it after I've basted the bias. I'm then going to get my flange, come in, baste it down all the way on the edge, once again baste it. Then I have to clip a little clip right up here because I really do treat it just as if I'm putting a ruffle inside this pillow. And I can either sew it, I have to clip a little bit there, and I have to sew it or baste it. Because as you can see, then when it's attached, it's going to open up and give us that beautiful finished edge. Now the front of the pillow is very interesting. It has one piece that comes in this direction diagonally. I have attached the bias, <coughs> the piping, I'm sorry, the piping to the underside to give that a nice designer detail. Then let me show you how we're going to put it together. The other part of the front of the pillow is another square, and I'm going to put it over here, matching up the corners with my piping already attached right in here. Then I will put the whole piece, right sides to right sides, on my pillow with the flange and the piping around it, and after it's finished, I will have put one of the frogs, as a matter of fact, I think we use three frogs, not two, I almost said two, but there are three frogs here. I'll put one, two, three frogs and the little frog button, and then you talk about a pretty pillow. I don't think you can get much prettier than that. Next, we have a silk ribbon stitch for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my dear friend and business colleague Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is the author of the book Colonial Inspirations and she has been one of a, a major contributor of beautiful silk ribbon designs and other things also to So Beautiful magazine. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's lovely to be here as always. <clears throat> now, Martha, today I thought we would talk a, just a little bit more about this quilt that we've been showing your viewers. Um, this section here is the biggest of the designs. That's the major design, which I have in the one corner. And then in the opposing corner, diagonally opposing, we have this, you can see it's just a simplified version of the main um, design which is here. So we have just a few less of these little roses and the little forget-me-nots. We have the snail, sorry, the little mice chasing each other here. Now on the other two corners, we've t it's the same design as this simplified version but without the mice. So we th I thought the viewers might just like to know that. It's difficult for us to show the whole thing in one go. 
So what I'm going to show your viewers today is how to do this rose. Now this rose is a new one, which I was feeling a little bored with the normal ones. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, let's see what we can do today. So here we are. It, it's, it's not difficult. It just takes a little bit of time to, to do it. So we'll just pop that to one side. And we're going to look at it here. Very simple, really. Um, we have our French knot. We have another two French knots just snuggling up closely to it. And we do want a tight little triangle here. And then you will see that I've got these little fluffy petals that go all the way around here. So that they just, as I say, they're slow and surprisingly, they take quite a bit of silk ribbon. I was really amazed myself just how many they took, how much they took. So here we are, you can see that we have, I've already put in two of the French knots here. And we're just going to put in that third little knot here. We're, oh, I haven't wound it there. So we'll just go over it again. And just the one twist, as always, pop it down. And as I say, we have that just sitting snugly in beside there, like that. Now, you'll see that I've already started this particular little rose, the petals here. So I've simply come from the back and then we're just going to take this up like that, curve it over, take the needle through to the back like that. And just hold it firmly with your finger. I'll just take the finger away so you can see just what I've done like that. Now, when I bring my needle back up again, I'm going to come up just inside that section there. I'll just point that out so that people can see exactly where I've come up like that. So, and that's what actually secures the, the petal there. So there we are. We're going to turn it round a wee bit and we're going to come back down there like that. At first, I, when I first started to do them, I was just taking it round like that. But I found that by letting it twist over like that, a bit like a flip-flop bow, um, <laughs> <laughs> that it just made it so much easier to do. And you can see that you can make this little petal just as big as you want or as small as you want, depending on the size of the, the rows that you want. And then once more, we're going to come up in that, like that, and continue on round. I find it easier to turn my hoop and then do it like that. And I'll keep on going all the way round until I've gone. And when I get back to, to this start section, ooh, start section here, I'll just do another little tack between there and there just to hold the two firmly. Now we also had these little purple flowers, the little forget-me-nots. These are, are really quite dark forget-me-nots, but very, very simple indeed. And just the straight stitch like that, the five all together, just lying flat on the ground, the tiny little French knot done in either stranded or whatever is your favourite um, embroidery thread in the middle here. And I like to have that in a, a sharp mustard colour. I always think it doesn't seem to matter what colour the flowers are, that mustard colour really does make a very, very nice uh, centre. Now, it is important to have these flat. We don't want any twists. So I'm just going to take it over my finger like that. And then I want you to notice how I'm using my thumb to just guide that like that. In that way, I don't get any twists. And it's just sitting there. Now you can see here, I've already done one. So we're just then going to put in the other five, the, sorry, the other four to make five. Just easing it over there like that. And then holding it firmly so that we keep on going round 
like that. We do like to have a fairly even distribution of our petals because I think they need to be even. And the other thing that you will notice that with these, with the darker colours, you do sometimes get a little bit of stressing through the middle of the ribbon. Don't worry about that. You really can keep on using that ribbon. And then, of course, that little French knot in the end. I like to put two, sometimes three. So we've just got a perky little knot that will sit up top <laughs> just like that. Beverly, thank you so much for those wonderful instructions and for your cute way of saying things. <laughs> and now then, we have a wonderful section about an exciting new notion. And this uh, part of this show was filmed for you at a recent sewing market in Arlington, Texas. If necessity is the mother of invention, then sewers must be some of the most creative people in the world. Um, with a resurgence in the interest in embroidery, they have come up with some really clever tools to help with their work. Um, the first of which is a pair of scissors I'd like to show you with a bent shaft that comes down. This aids in several things. Notice in our embroidery we have threads left that need to be clipped. We can get very close to the surface and also maneuver right up under without our fingers being so close to the surface. We can maneuver right up under a machine foot. Also, you notice we have stabilizer on the back of here and when we tear this off we need to get the paper out from under, this paper stabilizer out from under our embroidery. And for that, another wonderful tool is this pair of tweezers. Notice the tweezers, and they have a magnifier so that as you work and remove this paper stabilizer, you can see where you're getting. Uh, machine embroidery is not, only, is not the only application. We also have in handwork, there's a wonderful, wonderful new excitement over a timeless stitch, which is the drawn thread work. And here again, threads have to be actually removed from the fabric. So this magnifying tweezer is very good for removing those threads. And once they're removed, then we can clip them very close with our bent shaft scissors. Truly clever notions. At first glance, this beautiful little white dress looks like it just has insertion and three little tucks and then lace. But guess what? When we look a little bit closer, I want to show you something really interesting. Now, by the way, this is feather stitch, lace and feather stitch. This is really what I want you to see, though. These are indeed folded tucks. But if you will look about every one half of an inch, it's been pulled in with a little stitch to make it a shell tuck. You see there how that's really a little shell right in here, right in here, right in here. And if you look carefully, right in here, right in here. So these indeed are folded tucks, but they've been made into shell tucks. And that is so sweet. And this is the first time I've ever seen it on the dress. Going on down to the bottom, you can see the bottom just has a sweet little hem, which is hemmed with a feather stitch. For our Sewing for the Heart today, I have a letter from Jackie Reynolds and Barbara Cashin of the Pins and Needles Sewing Shops in Cleveland, Ohio. Sewing for Babies is a weekly program at which our customers sew layette items for babies born to needy young mothers at McCafferty House. Our shops provide workshop space during shop hours for the customers to work. Employees are on hand to provide assistance as needed. Patterns are provided and supplies and donations. The completed items are folded, packed, and bagged for delivery. If people cannot attend work sessions at the shops, kits are packed so they can work at home. Several customers work independently and bring in finished items. This is a truly gratifying program for both the givers and the recipients. Well, Jackie and Barbara, we appreciate so much your telling us about this project that you have for the young mothers at McCafferty House, and my thinking is that's also in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you so much for sending this information. Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today, and I'd like to invite you back next time. <music>